Ladies and gentlemen, we are so glad to have you here with us tonight. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. My name is Brad Reese. I'm an executive producer for The Shift and a brand manager here at Angel Studios for The Shift. And I am so excited for our show tonight. Guys, uh, as you know from the title of things, we've got Christopher Palaha, the star of The Shift, here with us. And we can't wait to bring him in uh, to talk about The Shift and help get you excited about it. Hopefully you already are, but, uh, but we've got a lot of fun things to talk about. And we are going to be debuting a brand new trailer that even Christopher has not seen. And I think it's going to blow your minds. Um, so actually, you know what? Let's, let's take a, just a very brief peek at that real quick. Let's play that real quick and then let's come back and talk about it. Not the whole trailer, just a little bit. Where's my wife? I shifted her. What do you want with me? Can't wait for you guys to see the rest of that, guys. It's fun, and it's uh, it's 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 so cool. The movie is ready. We can't wait for you to see it. And this trailer is just gonna—I think it's gonna blow some minds. I'm gonna be honest. So, real quick, let's talk about tonight. If now, if you just happen to stumble onto this and you're like, "Hey, I know Angel Studios, and I don't mind—I don't mind sitting in on a live stream." But what is the shift? Let me tell you a little bit about it. So The Shift, it's a dystopian drama, sci-fi thriller, but at the heart of this thing, it's, it's got so much heart. This thing is, um, now in my opinion, it's, it's like the perfect date night movie because there's the, like the right amount of romance in here. If you're a woman out there just that wants to get your boyfriend or husband to just go out on the perfect date night with you, um, this is it because for... The ladies, there is just an incredible amount of romance in this thing. But the, for the guys, um, you know, if, if, if that isn't exactly what you go to movies for, um, there is uh, there's action and sci-fi in this too. And it's a, it's a perfect blend of both. Um, and I'm excited to, uh, to talk about it with you guys, with Christopher Palaha, the star of the film here with us tonight. Um, but in the background of this thing is a beautiful story of hope and what it means to persevere in the face of darkness um, and how there really is light if you just hang in there. Um, and, there's, uh, and there's light really all around us, even if we're in the darkest places of our lives. So it's, it's a thinking movie, but it's a feeling movie, and I think you're going to love it. Um, and I can't wait for you to see the trailer here in just a little bit. Also, let me just tell you right now, tickets are on sale for The Shift. It comes out December 1st, and you can get your tickets right now by going to angel.com slash The Shift. And for being here with us tonight, we're going to hook you up with a buy one, get one free here around, uh, around these parts. We call that a BOGO. So here's how you do it. Go to angel.com slash The Shift and look for a showtime that's got a little gold star next to it with the theater. And uh, see, there we go, um, off to the right there. There's a little gold star if the theater is participating in the, in the buy one, get one free. So pick the showtime you want to go to, get your tickets, and enter the code. We've got two codes for you, and depending on how you're watching tonight, one might work, the other might work. So have both of these, write them down if you need. The first code is SHIFTYBOGO, SHIFTYBOGO, and you can see that on the screen right there. And the other code is easy to remember. It's just the title of the movie. It's The Shift. So um, if you're using this on the web, um, both codes will work. But if you're on a mobile device, one code might work. The other might work. So please, 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 for your benefit, because Angel Studios movies often sell out on the opening weekend, you can avoid that and be a date night hero by getting your tickets now at angel.com slash The Shift. Okay, so without further delay, let's bring on the star of our movie, Christopher Palaha. Christopher, how are you? Hi, Brad. This is like watching you. Dis I'm, I'm discovering you that you have this new superpower. I've never seen you <laughs> do a live before. You're very good at it. You oh, man, no, down. that's... Hey, coming from uh, a man who was literally cast as handsome man, that is high praise, and I'll take that. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. <laughs> no, it's fun to do this, and it's, it's fun to hang out with our, our angel audience, and um, we're excited to answer some questions with you. Are you open to, uh, to diving in a little bit? Tell us uh, about your experience with The Shift. Absolutely. I can't wait to share it. I, I, this job, it's been the job of a lifetime, so it's my pleasure to talk about it. Cool. Well, tell us about that. I know um, a lot of the folks at home may not know um, 
a lot of what goes into movie making and, and everything that goes into it. In fact, as we speak, there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people working on helping uh, this movie be prepared for opening night. Um, but uh, so we, f we were on set with you filming this thing back in February, but you've been busy with this even within the last couple weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was doing ADR, which is um, additional dialogue recording for the trailer, um, which I haven't seen yet, but I got to, I got the lines for it and they were like, here, read these. Um, and then, um, also like a last a few last little punches into the movie, which, um, you guys are doing an unbelievable job, by the way, angel studios has been such a treat working for and with, because seeing how you work with your guild and work with people who who wanted to see this movie from its inception and watching this start out as a kernel of an idea in Brock's mind and him pro and, you know, take that torch through the guild and spend the last, I think it's eight years of, of, of creating this story and then mm -hmm. seeing this come to fruition every step of the way from the way your posters are tested to the way, you know, the, the previews and the trailers and the way it's cut. The testing, all of it's been really, really fascinating, and I've learned so much in this process. So as much as I was able to be hired as an actor and to play Kevin, which was, a, again, a dream job and the role of a lifetime and something I'm so just spiritually deeply grateful for, um, then being sort of brought into the behind the curtains process of making a movie and seeing how the sausage is made and seeing all the different itinerations of the film itself. There were different stages of the cuts. There was a version and then it would change into a new version and it would kind of get, you know, and watching this whole thing get processed out has been such an amazing uh, yeah. masterclass in filmmaking. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, well, and that's, it's kind words. Appreciate. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you've had a good experience working on an angel studios film and, uh, um, hopefully, hopefully the first of many, um, it's, you know, we try to, we try to, we try to honor the audience. Um, and I think that's what it comes down to is gatekeepers out there for decades have decided what gets made and, uh, and you know, they've made a lot of great things. Um, I think we've all got favorite movies that we've seen over the years. And there's a reason we love going out to the theaters to enjoy movies. But what we aim right. to do is hopefully just create a better relationship between what filmmakers make and what people want to see. And, you know, the data and the testing and everything that goes into that tells us that people are going to be really excited to see what The Chosen has to bring. To, sorry, what? Well, obviously The Chosen because we're here tonight. But uh, but what the shift brings to the table um, I think the shift is is exciting, and there's there's so much testing and data that's coming in that says we've got a really fun movie on our hands that people are going to enjoy December first. Speaking of the chosen, if you like the chosen, there are not one, not two, but three actors from the chosen in the shift. So if you love it, you're gonna you're gonna. I, I'm I'm really excited about this movie, and I'm genuinely curious to see. Uh, what people think of it because it's unlike anything I've ever seen and I'm a huge movie fan I'm a cinephile from from I mean I love movies and uh, this is such a unique script it's a sci-fi thriller it's a multiverse it's a romance it's a spiritual like theological treaty uh, about suffering and about persevering and hope I mean it's it's gonna be uh, it's a it, it, I'm I, I think I think didn't you and I have this conversation on set where I said, I think this is the best work I've ever done as an actor. Did you hear me say that? Or did I say that to somebody else? Um, it's, it sounds like a familiar conversation, but I mean, go on, <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I feel like, I mean, I was working on, um, so funny that the strike is officially over. I can talk about all the things that I've been doing this year. I, I felt like if I had to do this interview you know, two days ago, I'd have to say like another project order. But I was working on a Biltmore Christmas for Hallmark, right? And we were shooting at Biltmore House in, in Asheville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from Kim Carpenter, uh, the producer of The Shift. And he said, I got a gig for you. Um, and my first question was, when does it start? Because I was worried that there was going to be a conflict of time that the two would overlap. And he said, it starts the 27th. And I think I wrapped on uh, January 26th or 5th or 4th or whatever. That would be Friday to Monday. And so I left North Carolina, uh, jumped on a plane, was on the ground Saturday doing a costume fitting, 
and was wow. on set Monday. I mean, it was literally like there, I had two days to process this script and ingest it, memorize lines, shed one character, put on a new character. And something happened because I told Brock, I said, I want you to kick my butt. I want you to, I want you to push me to the limits and try to kill me on this job. Like really, literally take me as far. I want to test my metal. I want to see where I can go. Yeah. And I think that the, the end result is a, a character, uh, a role and a film that ultimately you as an audience, you're going to experience a journey and it's yeah. rooted in authenticity and it's rooted in real, um, it really is a beautiful story. And I, and I feel like everyone who came to play, you know, brought, brought a whole level. And I certainly, uh, you know, I emptied myself out for this thing. So I'm excited to see how people, what people think of it. It's also very so, nerve wracking because if people don't like it, that's it. It's like, yeah, I'm, no, we were talking about that. There's a certain vulnerability of putting yourself out there and seeing how people react. So that's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned what you said just before that, because it reminds me of a question I want to ask you, but I want to remind our audience, uh, if you've got a question that you want to ask Christopher, go ahead and put it in the comments and uh, we'll, we'll take a couple of your questions live with you, uh, with you guys here um, to, to get Chris's take. Um, so Chris, you, you mentioned, um, you know, you were drained by the end of this thing and you came into it telling Brock, like, hey, push me. Uh, you've got a lot of physically demanding scenes. You're, um, you're in water, you're, you're running. Like, I think you've got 50 running scenes on this. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they're not going to talk about Tom Cruise running scenes after this. I think they're going to talk about Christopher Palaha running scenes <laughs> after this. Um, walk us through. He what, runs what, a lot. What <laughs> he runs a lot, but you run a lot in this movie. Talk, what, what was, walk us through some of the physical demands. What was this like filming this? I, I mean, it, so first off, you know, I was talking to somebody today and movies based on their budgets have varying days of how long it takes to shoot a movie. So a movie with a $200 million budget can take six months to film uh, because you're only shooting one scene a day or one half of a scene a day. And you're really, really kind of taking your time luxuriating because you have the cash to do that. This, this, while we had a healthy, robust budget was shot in 25 days, which is, um, considerably longer than a lot of independent films who usually get 15 days to shoot a film. But, of those 25 days, my character, Kevin, was he played every single day. So from that first Monday all the way to rap, uh, Kevin was, was on set in, I think, 104 out of 109 scenes. Uh, so just the physical demand of being on set. And I'm somebody, and Brad, I think you noticed this, like, I don't, I'm not, I don't like going to my trailer. I'm an actor who loves to stay on set. I yeah. like to be behind Video Village when I'm not working and I like to watch and I like to kind of understand the tone. A, you learn everybody's, you, you get a shorthand and you learn how the DP likes to work and how the director likes to work and how the producers and what's working, what's not working. Mm -hmm. And then to see your fellow actors at work, A, it's a great lesson and, it, and I always learn something cool, but B, it just helps me really stay in the pocket of the film and the character. So I was just on set for 25 days literally from, you know, crew, there was Joth Riggs was our first AD and every morning he would circle up the entire crew and do a safety meeting and sort of lay out the beats of the day. And I was there for 25 of those things. Every one of them. <laughs> all on video. Yeah. I mean, it's kind yeah, of Yeah. You amazing. knew everybody on set by the time, by the day, you, everybody, like you're, you're not yeah. kidding. You're spending time with everybody. Yeah. It was an amazing crew. We shot it in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, an amazing city opened up its doors wide open for us. And I think that we're going to have a screening uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, if I'm not letting the cat out of the bag uh, to celebrate with our crew. Is that, is that, is that it's news? true? Official? Yep. It's true. If you're watching this and you were involved uh, or even if you're not, um, if you're just a fan and happen to be near Birmingham, Alabama, uh, I think there's going to be an opportunity to get together for us. There is a, a special, a special screening. It'll be uh, on the 14th. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, just an opportunity to, to, to really sink in and, and get to, you know, play a character, uh, with, with, with literally leaving everything on the, on the floor. And to your question, I think of 25 days, my character had to run 
And this is an exaggeration. I think 20 of those 25 days in yeah. a scene or in several scenes where I was just running. Uh, he, Kevin runs a lot. <laughs> Kevin is, uh, Kevin's, well, he's in a tough place. He's got to be on the run a lot. Um, okay, so we've got a question. Eileen, what was the toughest scene for you to shoot? Hi, Thanks for the Eileen. question, Eileen. Yep, hi. Um, I think the toughest, honestly, the toughest scene for me to shoot, this story is going to quickly become legendary for fans of The Shift. Um, Brock, when I accepted the job, which was on his father's birthday, actually, which mm -hmm. was a pretty significant date for him, um, in keeping with the theme of the movie, uh, he said, listen, you're coming to work in a few days and there's a nine page scene that you have to prepare for with the benefactor, with Neil McDonough's character. And uh, so I'm looking at the nine page scene and I'm working on the nine page scene. Now, Neil had most of the heavy lifting for that. I had a lot of responding and listening to do. So it wasn't like I had a ton of dialogue, but I really hadn't looked past that. I figured I'd get through my nine day scene. And then that night I break down the rest of the week and kind of open it up. Well, little did I know that on day two, I had a seven page scene with Elizabeth Tavish <laughs> And it was the climax of the movie, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm supposed to know in that moment, my character, Kevin, is supposed to have lived through the entirety of the film, and I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be already, you know, at the end with emotionally and mentally and all of this stuff. And God is my witness. If I wasn't more nervous than I've ever been, more underprepared than I've ever been, and it was a supernatural sort of... It really was a miracle, the fact that I was able to get on set that day and my nerves just were dissipated and I was able to drop in. And I'm really very proud of that scene. I've, I've seen that and it's one of my favorite in the movie, but it was also one of the toughest to shoot. Yeah. Uh, and so that reminds of another question that we want to go over here in just a second. But let me remind folks out there, if you're just joining us, this is Christopher Palaha, star of The Shift in theaters December 1st. We are about to watch um, the brand new trailer that nobody else has seen yet. Um, but you can get your tickets. And for being here with us tonight, we've got a buy one, get one free special. If you go to angel.com slash the shift, you can see show times. If you pick one of the show times that has a, a little gold star off to the right, um, those are one of the participating theaters with our buy one, get one free special. Um, so select a show time with one of those theaters. And when you get to, uh, when you get to the end of the checkout, enter, we've got two codes for you, depending on how you're watching uh, both of these should work, but just so you have them, the first one is Shifty Bogo. Shifty Bogo, you should see it there on your screen. And the second one is easy. It is just The Shift. And uh, when you buy one ticket, you will get one free. But hopefully you buy like five because this is going to be a great movie to take the whole, mo the whole family out. Okay, um, so coming back in here. So Chris, you you bring up an interesting point. I, I I don't know if a lot of people know this, but most movies, um, the vast majority of movies, aren't filmed linearly, meaning um, the way that we watch it in in order of you know first scene to last. It's it's often right. shot by location, um, by ease. So if 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 multiple scenes happen at the same location, you're getting those out just efficiently by being there. Uh, what is that like? Um, so you, you talked about how difficult that, that was, but um, like, what's it like getting into the frame of mind of like, you know, knowing that the viewer is going to see you one way at one point of the movie and another way at the other point of the movie? How do you get ready for that? Yeah, it's, it's continuity and through line. What you want to do as an actor is break a script down when you read it, understand what the theme of the film is and understand have an intimate relationship with the through line of the story. And then you map that out so that no matter where you are, you can open up and say, Oh, in this scene, this is where I am in relationship to the other characters I'm playing with. This is where I am in relationship to the, the theme of the movie uh, and with myself. And so then, then you kind of have a, it's almost like giving yourself a, a blueprint as you mm -hmm. move through the filming of the movie. You know, a lot of times like Liz, she came in the beginning, um, few days of the filming and then she wasn't she was gone until the, the end of the movie neil was there for a week sean Aston was there for a week pars patel was there for a week john billingsley was there for a week so each guest sort of actor got to come in and um you know, they weren't guests they felt like guests because it was they had a they had a special week all to themselves right you're um, there all but, 25 days and everybody else yeah. is coming in and out <laughs> yeah 
but they would come in and, and, and it was wonderful because I got to work with these each week had a different theme, but emotionally and tonally based on who I was acting with, um, which is a, a unique experience, um, which I thought was cool. Uh, you know what I really love is the fact that I'm seeing where fans are buying tickets yeah. in real time. Like I just bought an AMC classic in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Georgia. Isn't that fun seeing that come in? Let's just call out a few of them right here. Guys, go ahead and click a showtime so we can call you out where you're at. Let's see. Now that I said that, we're going to have a little lull. <laughs> All right, we'll give people a chance to catch up there, um, and we'll call some out as you come in. Um, but okay, so next, uh, one, thing, one thing I know a lot of people are wondering about. So you've been in some incredible titles. Um, okay, here we go. Regal, Royal Palm Beach. So I'm, I'm assuming that's South Florida. We've got Centerville 12 in Virginia. What else, what else are we seeing here, Chris? Oh, okay. Regal Warrington Crossings. I wonder where Warrington is. All right. All right. Well, mm. shout out to Warrington. <laughs> okay. So we're talking, uh, you've been in some, you've been in Jurassic World. Uh, was it Jurassic World Dominion, right? Yeah. And Wonder Woman 1984. But a lot of, a lot of fans here tonight will recognize you from some huge Hallmark titles. Um, how does the shift compare to some of the other movies that you've been able to work on? Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of times, you know, there's a, there's a lot of energy surrounding the Hallmark universe. <laughs> and I say that because the, the fan base is fervent there. There's a huge sort of support network for the people who love those films and they love them for a real specific reason, which is the romance. Um, they're sort of like, if you wanted to put them in a genre, the rom-coms that we loved so much, like the Matthew McConaughey and the Drew Barrymore movies. Um, and when I got the shift, they, the movie, uh, some of the people on set were joking. They're like, yeah, this is kind of like a sci-fi version of a Hallmark film because you've <laughs> got this love relationship at the core of it. Um, the relationship Molly, in this is so powerful. Yeah, and it is everything. And it's, mm -hmm. I mean, if I were to break this story down, I would say it is about a man who is willing to go to the ends of every universe to get back to the love of his life. And it's a romance set in a multiverse and she's taken away from him or he's taken away from her. And it really is this, his journey back to her or back to home. Um, so it's, it's, it's really a love story. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the picture of Liz there. Which, okay. So let's, let's kick it over to that a little bit. You've got some amazing co-stars in this. Uh, let's just let's go to, let's go through a few of your your scene partners in this. What was it like working with Elizabeth Tabish? She is a dream to work with. She is just gracious and generous, and she listens and she's all in a hundred percent. It doesn't matter if it's her coverage or your coverage or the master. She's giving a hundred and twenty percent every single take. Um, she has that really beautiful spirit of, of gratitude. Um, that I think is is sometimes missing, you know, with a lot of actors because it's kind of, um, you know, people people get a little, you know, used to being on set. Uh, and Liz is somebody who, you know, she's on four seasons of The Chosen, and you would think that the shift was her first gig. She was so excited, awesome. Um, and it's I love that about her. Let's see. So. Uh... Yeah, she's she's fantastic, and and uh, as somebody who's seen the movie, um, if you're watching this tonight, like you're gonna love her performance. You're gonna love Christopher Palaha's performance. There are so many great perform performances in this thing, um, and the guys, the the relationship. Um, look, if you're if you're, I mean, guys out there like me, if you want to, if you want to win points with your wife or girlfriend, this is an amazing date night movie. Um, yeah, this is the movie to take them to December first. Be like, I got a great date movie for you. And then the good news is, the bonus is, it's a sci-fi multiverse mm -hmm. thriller. So all the dudes in the theater will be like, all right, now there's a movie for me. Yeah, and, and probably worth clarifying too. Um, if you hear multiverse, um, there's been a, there's been, I mean, look, there's, there's a popular comic book franchise out there that's maybe exhausted people a little bit on the multiverse. I just want to say, this is a totally, this is a totally fresh take on multiverse, right? Yeah. Well, I have a question for you. Yeah. 
The idea, the thing that sold me in the script was an argument that Molly and Kevin had. And she said, did you pay the bills? And he said, I never said I was going to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yes, you did. And he said, no, I didn't. I did not. And she's like, and they had this, they were at loggerheads because she was convinced that he said he was going to pay the bills and he was convinced that he never said that. And then the benefactor enters the picture and he's like, did you tell Molly that you were going to pay the bills? And he's like, no, I didn't. He's like, you're right. I shifted her. And the yep. Molly that I shifted, her husband did tell her. And all of a sudden it was like, man. And I remember being a kid thinking, what if we live in this world where every time we make a decision, there's another version of us that makes another decision. And that's what the basis of the shift is. There are multiple worlds where Kevin exists based, based on the choices that he's made. Mm -hmm. And so you have this sort of infinite, and the idea being that there's no fiction, that there is no version of reality that isn't real, um, which plays into the theme of chaos. And if there's, no, if there's nothing that's not, if there is no truth, right? If, if yeah. everything is true, then, then there's no, there's nothing, the chaos kind of rules, um, which I think is this really interesting take on a multiverse story. It's, it's such a, it's such an artistically smart look in at exactly what you're describing, the choices we make, but also just the, the human scenarios we end up in the, so the first, I don't know, a lot of people may not know the shift, the, the movie, the feature film that's coming out December 1st was based on a short film that the, the, the writer director Brock Heasley made years ago, years ago. And he reached out to, uh, to Angel Studios and I, I was lucky enough. I was one of the first people at Angel Studios that got to see the short film that it was oh, based on cool. and and it's based on around the scene that you're describing of you know I you said you would pay the bills no I didn't say that yes you did and then later the benefactor revealing that you both experienced exactly what you thought you experienced I I shifted I shifted your wife and that's uh and that's the chaos that I love to create and as I watched yeah. that it would just happen to look the timing was perfect Chris it was um, it was on a day that my wife and I had happened. Yeah, there's a look at our, our devious benefactor. There's uh, the, the one who loves, played by loves causing chaos. Great Neil McDonough. Yep. Yep. Um, so I, I watched this, and it was it was a morning that my wife and I had had a similar fight to what's portrayed in the short film and in the movie. And I melted into tears because I realized that, yeah, look, my wife wasn't shifted. I wasn't shifted. Like, that's that wasn't the point. The point was, is what spoke to my heart that day was that there are forces at play in the universe that try to tear love apart and try to tear marriages and families apart. And I just, mm -hmm. I got to cut through that for just a second and realize that at the bottom of all that, I love my wife and, and the petty things that we get caught up in are, are just that they're petty. And, and anyway, that's just one of the reasons I love film and I love this film is that it's just, it's a very reflective film. You kind of get to hold up a mirror to yourself and see some truth and, uh, and feel some beautiful things. So thank you for the, the performance that you gave that allowed that. That was that's really the, beautiful, Brad. <laughs> thank you. That was, that was a touching sentiment, man. <laughs> well, maybe a little deep and for it a is live a stream. Top of film and particularly this story, I think people are going to, um, I hope people are going to find themselves transported into Kevin's, into Kevin's POV and, and thereby transported into a place of hope and determination and perseverance because he really does believe that there are forces. And I think what I love about this movie is, um, you know, the benefactor is clearly an agent of chaos, but the light and the hope in the universe is never personified in a person. It's not brought onto screen, but it's embodied in this idea of, of Kevin's faith. And he's saying, I'm going to doggedly pursue through these tests and through these trials and through these tribulations. And as a storyteller, I'm always drawn to things that mean something greater than just going to the movies to escape. And I love escapism. I love, I think it's amazing to go to movies and laugh and, and, yeah. and you know, fall in love. That's why I do the Hallmark movies. But, but when I, but when you want to tell a story, um, the idea of that life is really, really hard and that bad things happen to really good people. Um, I met a woman tonight and her first child was born with, um, some kind of physical disability. 
and a bit of a mental handicap. Yeah. And then she and her husband tried again, and that child is born and is wheel bound, uh, wheel wheelchair bound for mm-hmm. her life. So now she's got two children that have special needs. And then the husband was like, I can't do, I gotta bounce. So he left. So now here's this woman who, when she sings, she's like an angel, she's this gifted singer and has these children that she's loving on. And her story is one of struggle and one of hardship and one of a lot of, I'm sure, intense pain and confusion. But here's this person who, through faith and through love and through perseverance, wakes up every morning and says, I'm gonna give my daughters the best life I don't know how to give them. I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to, I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to see, I'm going to, I'm going to see what happens today. And I love that. And I think, you know, that's what Kevin, that's what this character, uh, we, you know, we scratch into that of this guy just getting hammered in a world where nothing is going to be in his favor, you know, for as long as he can conceivably know, but he believes he has faith that there is this, that there is this other thing out there for him. Uh, amazing. Um, guys, you, you need to see this. If you're watching at home, get your tickets for December 1st. Uh, angel.com slash the shift. You, you get a buy one, get one free special tonight. Select a showtime that's got a gold star next to it and use the code either shifty bogo or the shift. Both of those will get you one free ticket when you buy a ticket. Um, okay, so guys, we're going to watch. Uh, it's the it's the first time anybody will have seen the brand new trailer for the shift. Let's go over one more question, um, and I'm going to ask this in a way that makes sure to not leave anybody else else out. We talked about um, th- how awesome it was to work with Elizabeth Tabish as a scene partner. Yeah. Um, yeah. Walk us through walk us through some of the other actors that uh, that you know. Okay, so we talked about Neil McDonough. Okay, a I'll, bit. I'll walk you. Th- I'll, yeah, I'll walk you through it. So my first day on set was with mm-hmm. Neil McDonough, the late, the, the, the great mad dog McDonough, um, <laughs> who audiences love from Yellowstone and Band of Brothers and so many other unbelievable films. The guy's got those blue eyes and he's really truly a master of the craft. He gets it and it was a joy watching him work. Uh, I learned a lot and he became a good buddy of mine and our, actually our, his family is now goes to my kid's school and I see Neil uh, almost weekly, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, so he was really a lot of fun to work with. And then I got to meet Sean Astin, came in for a week. And of course I grew up watching Sean from the Goonies to Rudy yeah. to Lord of the Rings. And here's a, a, a Titan uh, in the film industry. His mother was Patty Duke. I mean, we know like legacy stuff Mm -hmm. and his professionalism, his information, the guy had more stories. Like if I had a, if I had a question about what my character was trying to do and why he was trying to do it, Sean would have this unbelievable story um, about how to, how to fix that problem. And he would relate it to amazing directors that he'd worked with and other actors that he'd worked with. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy in the background. Um, and other, other actors that he'd worked with, super smart, unbelievable. And then John Billingsley came on to set. And John is a character actor that you may not know his name right off the bat, but you will know his face from so many amazing things that he's done over the years. Let me just read you a few, um, if I can, yeah, because yeah. it's... Yeah, The Man from Earth, 2012, Star Trek. The guy's been in, uh, I mean, just a litany of of movies over the years. And he's so good in the shift, too. He's amazing. And he does this thing with his voice where one minute he's almost like a bass baritone. And then he does this thing where he he treble cliff. I mean, watching other actors do their thing, I just, it made me, I was like, okay, Am I, I'm, I'm good. Let me, I got to make sure I'm, am I good enough? Like I got to keep <laughs> up with these guys. And then Rose Reed uh, is a wonderful young actress. She was just the star of a, of a movie called surprised by Oxford, mm-hmm. beautiful girl from Nashville, Tennessee, who comes in and plays a really challenging role because mm-hmm. it's like, a, it's super laser focused where she's got to drop in, go to 10 on the emotional scale and then doesn't get a lot of runway. To, to do that. And she does such an incredible job and, and plays this really important part in the film. Uh, and then of course there's Paris Patel 
Paris plays this interesting character. I don't want to spoil anything, but he, um, again, he got to come in and, and when he and I hung out, we, he was there for a whole week and we got to have this really cool friendship of just hanging out on set and then taking that afterwards to get burgers and talk about his experience on the chosen and what that's been like. And, uh, really a cool guy got to know, uh, his other castmate, Jordan, yeah, um, Jordan Walker Ross. Who some of you might Jordan know from Walker Ross, the Taylor Sheridan show uh, in the Yellowstone family, eighteen eighty three. Yeah, right. With again with Neil McDonough, um, or or Yellowstone is yeah. And then right, Jordan was in eighteen eighty three. Mm -hmm. um, again, great actor. And we had this scene where everyone brought their A game, and everybody showed up wanting to crush it. And and. Again, it's something that you learn from that Hallmark world where, you know, the first couple ones I did, people would be like, eh, it's just a little Hallmark movie. Don't worry about it. You know, and my attitude was like, no, I'm going to treat this like it's a Scorsese film. I'm going to yeah. make this the best thing that I know how to make because it's my face, it's my name, it's my work, and it's my reputation. And so that's the attitude that I bring to every set I go on. And what I loved was all of these professional actors came in and they were just ready to go to 10. Uh, and the script demanded it and people showed up. And I think the audience is going to love it. They're going to see really fine actors at their best. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think, did I miss uh, anybody? It's such a, it's people? such a deep cast too. Um, we got James Marsden. Jason Marsden. Or Jason Marsden. He's a great Yep, great voice actor. He gets a cool, a cool role in there. Oh, Jordan Alexandra, um, beautiful mm -hmm. young lady from England that we brought over from the UK, uh, and you're going to get to see her in a scene that's really pivotal. And um, uh, again, just great depth and, and and honesty, a lot of authenticity in this movie. Amazing, amazing. Um, once again, just the last, uh, call here, we're going to watch the, we're going to watch the trailer together just in a, in a moment. I do want to see if we've got, uh, one more question from the audience tonight. If we've got one more question, we'll have them bring it up, but, uh, make sure you get your tickets at angel.com slash the shift opening weekend is December 1st. Shifty BOGO is your buy one, get one free coupon code, or just the shift. Both of those will work for you. All right, we'll see if we've got one more question from the crowd, from the audience watching at home tonight, and uh, and then we'll watch this trailer. Okay, to Chris, how long did it take you to recover from all the shifting? That's a good <laughs> Hi, Suzanne, a guild member. Hi, thank you so much. I'm wondering if she um, if she helped uh, support and 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 make this movie possible. Yeah, I love, we love what Suzanne. You guys do it, Angel. Yeah, it's really cool to see the people. They, they, they know what they want to see, and then they actually contribute funds to make it possible to have that content made. Um, it's, an, it's an awesome thing. And so many people were on set. So I got to meet so many guild members uh, as they came and played background. They were background artists in the movie, but they're on the bridge, and they're in, in the, the Bear Stearns building when we get fired. And they're, they're just kind of peopled the set through the course of those 25 days. And it not only did it enhance the entire experience because it became a community mm -hmm. and literally everybody's my boss. So I'm <laughs> like, Hey everybody. <laughs> but, but, but more, more than that, uh, everybody was a contributor. Everybody was a collaborator on the shift. And so Ken Carpenter crushed it. His whole family was there doing crafty working camera, yeah. doing all this stuff. Um, you've got Brock Heasley who, is really the the this is the brainchild of Brock and you know his experience and I don't think I'm talking out of school because he's written a book about it but yeah. you know he lost his father when he was a teenager uh, to violent crime and I think the question of especially if you're a person of faith you know how does a loving God let that happen and and trying to find reason in the chaos and in the pain and in the trauma. Um, and what he did was he expressed himself through art in a way that became so beautiful and such a powerful life force that all these people gathered to support it financially. And now what we're hoping is that the box office continues to just thrive 
as people watch this movie, talk about this movie, share this movie with their friends and their family and really make it an event. And, um, and I love that it's coming out at Christmas time. Again, yeah. being on the Hallmark Channel and being a part of people's Christmases uh, on TV, I love that I get to be in theaters because for me growing up, going to the movies at Christmas uh, in that holiday season was always a highlight. Uh, we, you know, one of my first films was Chariots of Fire, and I believe that was released in the Christmas holiday season of 81, uh, and I remember it vividly. So yeah. it's, um, you know, I love that we get to be in theaters nationwide during the holidays. It, it oh, couldn't yeah. be a cooler experience. I think people are going to be surprised at how perfect this movie is for watching right in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a time when we want to believe, we want to, we want to feel hope. Um, we, want, we want to see the light in the world, and this movie will do it in spades. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a reminder to our audience, uh, Chris has not seen this trailer that we're about to watch. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is some of the, this, this is the, some of the first finished footage from the movie you've even seen, right? Yeah, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any of the special effects. I don't know any of the sound that you guys have done. I know that the, the work has been long hours, day and day and day. And I was, like I said, I was there yesterday, um, doing some ADR and then doing the some narration for what we're about to see. Um, so yeah, I, I have not seen. When I'm yeah, I'm excited to see it. Needless cool. to say. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and roll it, and then we'll come back and uh, and talk about it for just a little bit, and then uh, then we'll we'll head off into the evening, everybody. So, without further delay, enjoy the brand new trailer from The Shift. Where's my wife? I shifted her. What do you want with me? This is not my world. I've never been to this lake before. Never walked its shores. But I will find my way back. And I will find my way back to my Molly. Five years ago, I was left in this dark place. Taken from my wife. The people here have no hope. You still look at that wife of yours? You're clinging to scraps of rumors. And then he arrived. Where's my wife? I shifted her. For every choice you make, there are countless other realities where you make a different choice. You're talking about parallel Earths. Imagine having the power to move people from one reality to the next. To shift them. What do you want with me? I can make you a king. Imagine everything you have ever wanted. Work for me and get back with the woman that you love. Okay, we go on a date and maybe we kiss. Hopefully. He's not gonna shift you back to your wife. It's a trick. If I choose you, that's the last choice I'm ever gonna make. I would never leave you alone. I've seen a bunch of people like us out there looking for a little hope. There is nothing that I won't do to you. You can't just shoot the devil. There is so much evil and inhumanity in this world, but there is also beauty and hope, and I will find my way back to her. Hi, I'm a. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. <Cut. laughs> If you want to see the full message from Elizabeth, keep an eye on the Angel Studios and the Shift social media. You'll be able to see the rest of that right there. Okay, Chris, first reactions. What? Come on. That's amazing. That music is beautiful. Isn't it? Where'd you get that from? 
So um, yeah, the uh, the trailer team that works on that they uh, they came to us and said, all right, we've got we've got a really strong opinion on where we want to take the music on this, and it has to do. And as you see the movie, folks, you'll find that that you'll song. You'll understand uh, how it plays. Mm-hmm. It's got a pretty important theme in there. We were like, hey, you know, let's let's talk about this. We want to make. Are you really sure about this? Because, you know. This movie wants to say a lot of things, and we don't want to go in too hard with this, you know, traditional, you know, hundred year old, you know, song. Like, what what are you thinking here? And they said, please, please trust us. It's really good, right? It's so good. I want to get. I want to download it, and like, I want to like play it in my car. And then all of the other there's things that I think are in the trailer that you may or may not see. I don't know if they're, in, I don't know, like, but they're, it's amazing. Like that was amazing. And it gets the story across. Yeah. I like to call that the benefactor trailer. That's like, that's, that's the whole point of, that's a great tight, clean, cl- clean trailer. Good job guys. Well, we're, we're glad to hear that you like it. And hopefully if you're watching right now, comment with some of the things that you loved about that, things that are intriguing, make you, making you wonder. You know, one thing that really stood out to us that we really wanted to put front and, front and center on this is, is Kevin's quest to get back to Molly. I love how you said it earlier. Uh, in fact, how, how did you say, say it again? What, uh, what is this? Kevin will go to every end of every I universe. Said, I said he'll go to the ends of every universe to get back to the the woman he loves. And doesn't that come out like so strong in this trailer? Yeah, it really yeah. does. Yeah. The other thing, I think we're definitely seeing the yeah, the physical uh the physical struggles that uh that you had to go through for this. You're getting hit by a car, <laughs> you're getting dumped into a lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People want to see it. They're buying tickets in Indian River right now. Florida there we go. And, and Texas and people are excited that that the trailer did its job. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Well, if you like what you saw, certainly head to angel.com slash the shift and, uh, and select your show times there. Um, okay. Well, Chris, thanks so much for being on with us tonight. Thanks for watching this with Gosh. us and reacting. Um, I'm glad you're just, you're at least as excited as I am to see this in theaters now. Oh, it's so cool. Now, how can I share that trailer on my social and how can I get that to people? Is there a link? Or is there anything that's accessible or is that is it only for theatrical release? What's the story with that trailer? So um, a couple things on that. Um, there will be some folks uh, in the movie theater that will be able to see that in, in some of the right places. Um, it will be on social media soon. We're going to ask everybody to keep an eye out on The Shift and Angel Studio social media. Um, and it will be out soon. But uh, but for for the folks watching tonight, uh, that's your reward is it's, it's – uh, it's just for you guys right now. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, we'll get the word out as soon as we can share it wide to everybody. We just wanted to give everybody That's tonight amazing. an advanced look. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we covered some great questions tonight. We covered the BOGO. Um, make sure to get, uh, you know, buy one ticket, get one free at angel.com slash the shift. Let's put the, the two coupon codes on the screen one more time. The first one is shifty BOGO. Uh, when you, now, make sure you select a theater that's got the little gold star off to the right. Those are the theaters that participate in the BOGO. So the first code is Shifty BOGO, and the other one is The Shift. Okay. All right. Any last thoughts you want to leave us with tonight, Chris? No, I'm just excited. Again, you know, the success of a movie, um, there's different levels of, of Hollywood as far as how much money people throw at things. And um, regardless, if, if it's a big, 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 big tent pole that's got hundreds of millions of dollars behind it, or if it's a little tiny independent film like this one, the best thing is to vote with your dollars. And if you want to see movies that celebrate light and that push light into the mainstream, uh, that are encouraging, that are filled with hope, that give you know actors um, a chance to make a living telling really hopeful stories mm-hmm. that encourage and inspire then get to the box office and show Hollywood, you know, that you want to see more of these movies. And the bigger that box office grows, uh, that sort of is, that's how we, that's, that's, that's the language of the, of, of the industry, the entertainment industry, big box office equals more movies like this. And I hope that we earn that, I hope that you guys love it. And if you do, please tell everybody, you know, to go see it in the theaters where it's meant to be seen. Um, and I'll exactly. see you at the movies. 
And I know you and I were talking a little bit earlier that, uh, you know, December 1st, it's, it's on the other side of Thanksgiving from us right now. It might as well feel like, you know, next year. Um, but yeah. it's going to be here in just three short weeks, three short weekends from now. And Angel Studios movies often sell out on the first weekend. Um, but you can send a message to the industry, to, to, to the movie theaters that this is an important movie. And, uh, and guys, like, I promise you're going to be a date night hero if you go ahead and get those date night tickets. So with that, we'll leave you to your evening. Thanks for being here with us tonight, everybody. And we'll see you December 1st. Thanks, guys. Hi, Brad. Where's my wife? I shifted her. What do you want with me? This is not my world. I've never been to this lake before. Never walked its shores. But I will find my way back. And I will find my way back to my Molly. Five years ago, I was left in this dark place. Taken from my wife. The people here have no hope. You still looking for that wife of yours? You're clinging to scraps of rumors. And then he arrived. Where's my wife? I shifted her. For every choice you make, there are countless other realities where you make a different choice. You're talking about parallel Earths. Imagine having the power to move people from one reality to the next to shift them. What do you want with me? I can make you a king. Imagine everything you have ever wanted. Work for me and get back with the woman that you love. Okay, we go on a date and maybe we kiss. Hopefully. He's not gonna shift you back to your wife. It's a trick. I choose you. That's the last choice I'm ever gonna make. I will never leave you alone. I've seen a bunch of people like us out there looking for a little hope. There is nothing that I won't do to you. You can't just shoot the devil. There is so much evil and inhumanity in this world. But there is also beauty and hope. And I will find my way back to her.